Today's all-time artist was on the ropes before his career really took off. Uh, he was almost 30 when his label told him that after eight straight poor-selling albums, if his next album didn't have a hit on it, he was going to get kicked to the curb. Uh, time was catching up with him. Uh, he would write that hit, though, sometime later. A 70s classic rocker with a vernacular that defines the era. This rocker thought that the song was just okay, whereas the suits from his label were predicting it would be an all-out smash. And for once, the label was right. How One of Rock's Good Guys stole number one with a song that would go to number one again 16 years later. The story's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you're the greatest air drummer or air guitarist that you know, you're going to want to subscribe below to this channel right now. Uh, ring the bell so you always know uh, when the stories of rock and roll from the greats drop, and they drop daily. Make sure to, um, to also check us out on Patreon. That really does help us to do so many more interviews and, and that's the idea behind this channel, the mission. So today we're gonna break down an all-time classic that saved a budding career as the record label was ready to drop this artist and to stave off elimination, he wrote a song that has become part of the rock and roll pop culture vernacular. So let's go back to the classic rock 70s and break down the ultra classic, The Joker by Steve Miller Band. I'm a joker, I'm a smoker. Steve Miller was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in 1943. Now, Steve's parents loved jazz music. His mother was what Steve called an exceptional jazz influence singer. While his father worked as a pathologist and an amateur recording engineer, Steve's godfather was none other than the legendary Les Paul, who along with Paul's wife, Mary Ford, were close friends of the Millers. Now, how's that for serendipity? In 1950, the Millers moved to Dallas and Steve began learning to play the guitar with invaluable tutelage from Texas greats like there was Charlie Mingus, there was Tal Farlow and T-Bone Walker who taught a young Steve how to play the guitar behind his back and even how to play with his teeth. How cool would it be to have those guys as guitar teachers? By the time he was 12, Steve had a band called the Marksman Combo yeah, you know, he's playing frat houses and sororities and churches and synagogues. Another iconic musician was a backup vocalist in this band. It was none other than Mr. Lowdown himself, Boz Skaggs. Miller and Skaggs attended the University of Wisconsin, and they fronted a group called the Fabulous Night Trains at that point that tore up the frat circuit with its hard driving music. And after college, Miller went to Chicago and joined forces with Barry Goldberg to form the Goldberg Miller Blues Band. Later enchanted by the, the hippie movement of the 60s, Steve drove the VW bus that his dad gave him to San Francisco and he formed the Steve Miller Blues Band. That was in 1966. Of course, later shortened to the Steve Miller Band. The group was signed to Capitol Records a few years later and between their debut album in 68 and 1973, Steve's band released a whopping seven studio albums. The Steve Miller band had a psychedelic rock sound that was prevalent in the 60s, but they only had one single that broke the Billboard Hot 100. It's called Living in the USA, and it actually only made number 94. When the discussion began for uh, Steve Miller band's eighth album, the executives at Capitol Records made it known that if the eighth album didn't yield a hit, their investment in the Steve Miller band would come to an end at that point. The pressure was on big time. It was do or die. And as history would show, Steve was up for this challenge. Deliverance would come for Steve Miller when he started playing around with an idea for a song at a party in California and Nevada, just north of California. Uh, he noodled on his guitar while mashing up some lyrics from some of his older compositions, and he came up with a tune that he eventually called The Joker, a song that would live on classic rock radio for the ages. Play my music in, the sun. in an interview from 2016, Steve Miller divulged that The Joker saved his career. Ironically, Steve didn't think The Joker was a hit at all. 
let alone a number one hit that would rescue his career. Um, as I've said, at the time, the pressure was really heavy to create a hit. And Miller said in that interview, and I quote, I never thought the Joker was going to be a hit. I took the challenge. I said, okay, it's got to play on top 40 radio and it, it's got to follow a soul disco symphony. I always wanted to make singles. I like singles. So I just started taking that uh, two and a half minute thing and I started looking for sounds that record well. He also go on to say, it's like a game, like a crossword puzzle. And as long as you get some tunes that uh, have got the feeling and the soul and, and substance to them, there you go. So even after writing The Joker, a song that would become one of the greatest of the rock era, I mean, a staple of classic rock radio, you hear it all the time, Steve Miller didn't think it was a hit. But here's the thing. The Suits of Capitol Records had no doubt it was a hit. They made it the lead single from the album of the same name. In fact, when Steve Miller showed the full album to the Suits at the label, he go on to say, and I quote, you know, that's how bright I am. I just decided, man, that's not my gig. That's not my job. So I said, you think there's a single on it? You're the guys that have got to go out and make people play it. And then Steve Miller would also say about playing the song for the label. He said that he was in a meeting with them. And uh, he said, you know, so we're, we're there listening to it. And one guy stood up, just like Brigham Young, and said, that's a hit. Like, this is the place. They all just sort of stood up with their fingers up in the air. They started marching around going, that's a hit. <laughs> That's cool. The Joker became a massive breakthrough hit that shot to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. It happened in January of 74. So how did he come up with the pompous of love, the, the part about Maurice and the gangster of love? And I tell you right now, as we go into the history and creation of the song, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the brand I proudly wear. Just like me, you can go get blocks by Zenny, which protect your eyes against harmful UV and blue light that we all encounter from time to time. So get this, the track was an aggregate of older Steve Miller lyrics and a tip of the hat to several doo-wop and, and R&B songs that had influenced Miller when he was a kid. The opening line, some people call me the space cowboy, that was taken from the Steve Miller band album, Brave New World. Some people call me the space cowboy. Gangster of Love from the second line. Some call me the gangster of love. That was the title of a Johnny Guitar Watson written tune on the Steve Miller Band album Sailor that came out in 68. Of love, you know I'm a Some call me the gangster of love. And the name Maurice it was from the lyric, some people call me Maurice, with Steve playfully rolling that R. Some people call me Maurice. <laughs> This alluded to Miller's 50s throwback, Enter Maurice, off the 72 LP, Recall the Beginning, A Journey from Eden. Maurice is the only word. Some people call me Maurice. <laughs> the Joker is most famous, though, for the line, really love your peaches, want to shake your trees. I really love your peaches, want to shake your trees. And the nonsensical word, pompous, as in pompous of love. So let's shake the trees first. The line is taken from the 1954 number two R&B hit, Lovey Dovey. It was originally recorded by the Clovers. The song was written by Galveston, Texas songsmith, Eddie Curtis. Miller also borrowed the words lovey dovey, lovey dovey all the time. from Lovey Dovey, which was a line that Ahmet Erdogan, the legendary co-founder and president of Atlantic Records, contributed to Curtis's composition. Uh, because Miller had used lyrics that were copyrighted by Curtis and Erdogan, he was uh, legally obligated to give them writing credits on the Joker. How about that? I always thought Lovey Dovey. I mean, that's just a word everybody uses, but. Now let's delve into the origin of the made up word pompous. Once again, Steve uh, took some artistic license and he borrowed from an old song from 54 when he included Pompidus to complete the sentence. Because I speak of the Pompidus of love, as in verse one of the Joker. The of love. 
Steve got what he thought was pompous from the doo-wop classic The Letter by the L.A.-based quintet The Medallions. But he actually misheard it. The actual word is puppetous, which was a nonsensical created by Medallion's lead vocalist Vernon Green. And discuss the puppetous of love. So the correct lyric from the song is, let me whisper sweet words of pismatality and discuss the puppetous of love. Puppetous is a term that Green invented, meaning a secret paper doll fantasy figure. Pismatality from that lyric line is yet another uh, nonsense word that Green created for the letter. According to Green, pismatality describes words of secrecy that could only be spoken to the one that you love. Steve Miller's incorrect translation of Green's lyric ended up coining pompous, and it puzzled the public well beyond the Joker. Later in 1974, Wolfman Jack used the phrase pompous of love in the Guess Who song that he guessed it on called uh, Clap for the Wolfman. Everybody talk about the Wolfman's pompous of love. The pompous of love is also the title of a 1996 movie starring John Cryer. Could be the, the impetus of love. The impotence of love? No, the impetus. You know what, what makes it go... So I guess Cryer was doing research for his role, you know, to really understand the theme of the film, and he wanted to find out what pompous meant, so he went right to the source, Vernon Green. Vernon revealed his definition of pompous in their conversation, but he also corrected uh, John Cryer, telling him the word was really... Puppetous. When Cryer brought up how pompous was used in Steve Miller's The Joker, and now, you know, the word had baffled people for a long time, surprisingly, Green had never heard this song. And he apparently didn't know anything about it. He must not have listened to the radio, or at least rock radio. Cryer played the song for Green, and he just laughed hysterically at how his concocted word had evolved into the lexicon of pop culture. Vernon Green sadly died, though, five years later in 2000 from complications of a stroke. Uh, the musical arrangement of The Joker also borrowed heavily from another Steve Miller R&B affection, Alan Toussaint's Soul Sister from 1972. I hear you with the curly bush on your head, baby. There's really no other song like The Joker, and it's definitely a candidate for most memorable lingo from a rock song. Uh, outside of Pompadus of Love, Maurice and the Space Cowboy, there were the lyrics, I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker. I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker. Which references the fact that, you know, Steve Miller might have enjoyed an occasional joint at midnight. <laughs> the lyrics that say, uh, I'm a picker, I'm a grinner, I'm a lover and a sinner, seem a bit autobiographical because Steve always plays his guitar with a huge smile on his face. Cause I'm a picker, I'm a grinner, I'm a lover. And you know, he's a lover and he's a sinner, but he sure doesn't want to hurt no one. He's just looking for a good time, aren't we all? I sure don't want to hurt no one. Of course, Steve Miller added some really cool artificial harmonics to the Joker that accentuated the song's uh, cocky Casanova aura. Uh, most notably, the wolf whistle effect, right? all the time. <laughs> Missile created the wolf whistle sounds in the Joker by moving the slide guitar up while depressing a wah pedal, you know, pushing the volume limit to the max, just shy of turning it up too loud to avoid distortion from feedback. The wah-wah guitar solo in the song's instrumental bridge is perfectly executed to transport us to some tropical location with sandy beaches and palm trees and just gives you the coolest feeling. Although the Joker did not crack the British charts on its initial campaign uh, in the 70s, it catapulted to number one in the UK in 1990 because of a very effective placement of the song in a heavily advertised uh, TV commercial for Levi's in that country. I'm a picker, I'm a grinner, I'm a lover, and I'm a sinner. The Joker holds the record for the longest gap for a transatlantic chart topper. 16 years separate the Joker's ascent to number one in America on the Billboard Hot 174, and then when the song climbed to the top of the singles chart in the UK in 1990. When the song hit number one in America, Miller hung the gold record, get this, over his washing machine. What he said, and I quote, is, uh, 
As I do my underwear and my socks, I can consider the star who wore them. Steve Miller really is the Joker. The Joker, the album, that rose to number two on the Billboard 200, selling well over a million units. Uh, the Joker, the title track, and the first single from the record took 19 days to finish, actually. In the subsequent nine years that followed the breakthrough success of The Joker, Steve Miller would turn out eight top 40 hits in all, including two number one singles, Rockin' Me, that happened in 76, and Abracadabra, that happened in 82. So keep on rockin' me, baby. Steve Miller was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2015, although he found the induction ceremony offensive and disrespectful. And honestly, I did too. Considering that Steve Miller should have been in the hall years before. Rolling Stone was also disrespectful at the time the song came out and when it was making its way up the charts saying that they called him the man without a face. The truth is Steve Miller's music will outlast Rolling Stone, which isn't even a, a music magazine anymore, let's be honest, it's a political rag. While Steve Miller's numerous classic rock standards play every hour on the hour on classic rock radio across the world, especially The Joker. And with its thumping bass line and easy talk and guitar. Some people call me the space cowboy. I always loved the song. It's a, just a feel good laid back classic that was one of the few songs that everyone I grew up with, and I mean everyone, that I ran around with could get behind, if you know what I mean. My taste is all over the place, but when I was growing up in a small town in Idaho, musical genres were a lot like social groups and, and cliques. You know, the cowboys listen to country, the gearheads listen to hard rock and metal, preppies and wavers listen to new wave, the stoners listen to metal, the jocks listen to rap metal, the popular kids listen to top 40 pop, and so on and so on. But there were a couple of songs that everybody could get behind, could get on board with, and the Joker was at the top of that list. Well, don't you worry, baby, don't worry, cause I'm right. I remember it came on the radio when I was a sophomore in high school, and uh, though my dad played it numerous times, I sat and watched as my friend laughed his head off at the iconic lyrics. After that, for weeks and probably months, we quoted the song like we did like Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Tommy Boy. Just iconic lyrics. Steve Miller just has a uniquely resonant voice, you know? Hearing that voice of his and seeing him perform the song over the years, he just seemed like one of us. A guy that's kicking back, trying to have a good time, not taking the whole life thing too seriously. And that's why every generation latches onto his, his feel-good music. Steve Miller is the recipe for the time that we live in right now. Some call me the gangster of love. Yeah, just grab a great pair of headphones and, uh, and, and a mode of listening, you know, however you listen to your music, iPhone or even better vinyl, and play Steve Miller's The Joker. Sprawl out on your couch, see the world through his eyes for a minute. I'm a joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight toker. He speaks for a lot of us. We've all got a little space cowboy Maurice and gangster loving in us. We're all lovers, we're all sinners. Thanks for putting it in perspective, Mr. Steve Miller. I'm a lover, I'm a sinner. I play my music. Leave us a comment about this classic laid back ditty and Steve Miller. What are your memories of the song? What do you think about the lyrics? What are your, what's your favorite lyric? Let's talk about it below. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. Check us out on Patreon as well. It's all about keeping the music alive. Till next time, three chords and the truth.